Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a relatively new study that potentially provides a really exciting explanation to at least two separate mysteries coming from the center of our galaxy. And specifically, somewhat unusual observations and somewhat unusual emissions that for decades now have been sort of confusing everyone. Mostly because these observations were essentially an anomaly. And so in this recent study, Pedro de la Torre Luc, whose name I'm sure I mispronounced, actually provides us with a really exciting explanation that there's a very high chance that what we're observing is potentially the mysterious dark matter. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, because technically this would be some of the first observation of dark matter particles coming from the center of the galaxy. But before we start, let's discuss the mysteries and why this is kind of important. And that's because for many decades, scientists observing the Milky Way galaxy discovered something bizarre. And so here this is actually coming from the region known as the CMZ, Central Molecular Zone. A very large part of the Milky Way center that contains 60 million solar masses of dust and gas and is essentially filled with giant molecular clouds and quite a lot of different activity. We've actually discussed some of the previous discoveries about this region in some of the videos in the description. Naturally, this is also where the central massive black hole is located as well. You can sort of see it right there. But here, for many years, researchers have also been discovering just a little bit too much energy. And specifically, by analyzing these clouds, and by looking at the emissions from a lot of this gas, over the years, scientists established that there seems to be an excess of what's known as ionization. Or in other words, even though technically hydrogen should basically be neutral gas, here there was an excess of ionized hydrogen pretty much everywhere. And it was not just hydrogen, it was also molecules of water and even things like methanol. So basically here, for many years, in many different locations, scientists kept discovering a significant excess of ionized molecules that would basically require an extremely large injection of power at all times. So this could not be explained as a single event, such as, for example, active central black holes or even occasional supernova. Whatever was ionizing this gas, it seemed to be happening in real time. And though some of the previous explanations suggested that maybe this was basically coming from the cosmic radiation or cosmic rays, a lot of different studies established that cosmic rays were just not enough. Here, the amount of energy was just a little bit too much. And so the source of this anomalous ionization was somewhat difficult to resolve. Although naturally, there's been a lot of different propositions from a lot of different studies. So far though, nobody actually knows what's causing all of this. And obviously, something similar has been observed in a lot of other galaxies. But because they're much farther away, it's usually difficult to tell what's happening there as well. For example, in many cases, it has been attributed to the central active black hole in the center, like in this galaxy right here. But because the Milky Way galaxy doesn't have an active black hole, and the black hole here has not been active for some time, it would be somewhat difficult to explain why so many clouds in the central region seem to be ionized. And so that's mystery number one. Then there's a completely separate mystery that's sort of unrelated to this completely, but also involves very high energy particles that cannot be explained. And here this concept is known as 511 keV line emission. In this case, 511 keV refers to 511 kiloelectron volts, or the exact energy of various photons detected from various locations around the galaxy. This is sometimes referred to as the gamma ray line emission, although because the energy is actually kind of low, it's also been referred to as an X-ray emission line. And the thing is, some of the first observations reveal something unusual happening in the center or essentially revealed that this unusual emission line seemed to be concentrated in certain regions. Now, the specific energy here is very often attributed to positron annihilation. In other words, when a positron combines with an electron, it very often produces these photons with 511 kiloelectron volts of energy. And the first signature of this positron annihilation was actually seen back in 1970s. But surprisingly, it was all coming from the galactic center. And pretty much since then, the source of these galactic positrons remained more or less unknown. This essentially became known as the 511 KV puzzle. But some of the more recent observations detected the emissions coming from a lot of parts of the galaxy, even from the disk itself. So essentially here, there was an unusual source of these positrons produced at all times everywhere in the galaxy, with the large source right in the middle. And once again, the production rate or the annihilation rate was really high requiring huge amounts of energy produced by something at all times. And so over the years, this became the strongest persistent galactic gamma ray line that seems to be coming from the center of the galaxy, no matter what. 
with the largest source being right in the middle. Basically right in the center of this central molecular zone. And so something right in the center was causing electrons and positrons to continuously annihilate, here we're talking about antimatter annihilation, and to basically continuously produce huge amounts of energy. But it made no sense that it was in the galactic bulge and not anywhere else. As a matter of fact, additional research discovered no point source in this case, so this was not coming from the central black hole, but was more or less distributed in a way where the density was the highest in the center, but decreased as you moved away from the center, in essence making it look something like this. And naturally, over the years, quite a lot of explanations have been proposed, but most of them did not satisfy everyone or would always have some kind of an inconsistency. Now, for example, one explanation for the detections from the disk, the ones that you see in purple, suggested that this could be attributed to various radioactive elements such as isotopes of aluminium and titanium. This would be the result of various supernova over time. And though this could explain some of these detections, it once again does not explain what's happening in the center because we don't actually see that many supernova in the center and because we should also be seeing concentrations of these elements in certain molecular zones where new stars are constantly formed. This would apply to, for example, the Orion Nebula. And so here this bulge emission seemed to arise from something entirely different and was very likely not the result of any radioactive isotopes. With additional explanations suggesting that maybe this was a result of type 1 supernova or even smaller black holes orbiting various stars, so in this case X-ray binaries, but because we don't actually expect that many in the center, this once again did not make much sense. And so this bizarre 511 KV mystery essentially stayed completely unexplained for approximately 50 years now. But this new study proposes that both of these mysteries could be solved if this was indeed some kind of a particle, specifically a relatively light particle, that would also be responsible for the mysterious dark matter. Or to be more exact, they propose light dark matter annihilation as the explanation for this and for the highly ionized gas visible everywhere. Although here it's important to clarify that this would not be a massive dark matter particle such as the one known as WIMP or weakly interacting massive particle, because in this case these observations can only be explained if this is a very low in mass particle that's able to self-annihilate and able to produce certain emissions, which then result in the production of antimatter and also result in the production of highly ionized gas. But because in this case we expect dark matter to represent approximately 85% of all matter in this region, even a small portion of these particles annihilating over time would definitively explain the excess of energy. And so the energy signatures coming from the center of the Milky Way, that also seem to be relatively constant and don't actually change much over time, could easily be explained if this was indeed an extremely large amount of self-annihilating particles. Specifically particles whose total energy is below 1 giga electron volt, but also particles that would be maybe more massive than the mysterious axions. You can learn about axions in one of the previous videos in the description. Naturally though, because here we're talking about dark matter, since it doesn't really interact with anything and doesn't produce emissions by itself, the only way to detect it is basically by observing the effects on the matter nearby. And so as these tiny particles occasionally combine or interact with each other in such a way that they cause self-annihilation, they then end up producing new charged particles that then ionize the gas around them. But once again here, the dark matter particles would have to be of a very specific mass. The mass that has not been actually explored that much yet. But if the study here is correct, it would once again solve at least two mysteries all at once. The mysterious gamma ray emissions and the mysterious ionization emissions. While also giving us a hint about dark matter particles and potentially what they're made out of. But in order to confirm this, one of the first things that needs to be done is what's known as a spatial correlation. Or essentially a detailed observation and a very thorough analysis of the 511 keV emissions compared to the emissions of the ionized gas. Because if this is caused by the same phenomenon, we expect a very large correlation between molecular clouds and the positron line emission, along with potentially other emissions that can be created by these interactions. Now since this has not been done yet, we obviously have no idea if this is correct, and even if these correlations are discovered, there might still be an additional explanation. Mostly because this is such a chaotic and such an active region that we pretty much discover new things about it every single year. Once again, some of the videos in the description talk about these previous discoveries. But if the study is correct, we might have our first evidence for the physical annihilation of dark matter particles 
coming from the center of the galaxy, with this bizarre annihilation actually causing changes in the center, even resulting in certain chemical reactions that would not be possible unless this extra energy existed. And that's because a lot of this ionized gas then results in the production of a lot of new complex molecules. But only time will tell, and specifically, only additional follow-up studies will tell if any of this makes scientific sense. For now, this is a really cool proposition and a potential explanation, but I'm sure there will be a lot of debates and a lot of counter-arguments about what's actually happening. And so until future studies or more explanations, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who wasn't about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.